Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to take a look at using one of my favorite extensions in Photoshop CC, which is Adobe Paper Texture Pro. But before we look at that, this image is also from an extension. It's Pexels. Now we will find these extensions under the window menu extensions. And if we go across, there's Adobe Paper Texture Pro. I'll come back to that in just a moment. This is Pexels. Now, the first time you open this, you'll need to create an account on Pexels. You can then see the images both as this panel as well as on the Pexels website. Now, if we just go to the recent tab, these are the recent images which have been uploaded to Pexels. You've also got the popular panel, which are the popular images on Pexels, as well as the popular searches. Of course, you can also create your own search by just typing in the box here. We've got the likes panel, which is over here. This is the image we're using. Click to insert. This will insert it into Photoshop and it comes in as a smart object. You've also got this little icon. Click on this and it will take you to the photographer's page on pexels.com so you can check out more of his images. This is the icon here, it's shown in red, that indicates that it's under my likes panel. Right, let's close that down. We're going to head back up to Window, coming down to Extensions and Adobe Paper Texture Pro. It's now inserted it as a new panel. At the very top, we've got Select a Blend Mode. Click in the window. You can select the blend mode which you want the texture to be added in. I prefer to use Overlay, so let's start off with that. These are the textures and there's loads of different textures to choose from. And you can see all the colors as well as the textures. And down the bottom, you've got a little button to add more textures. So if you've got textures in a folder on your computer, just navigate your way to those folders. It'll then add it to the list. Right, let's head back up to the top where we've got 2014 Alice. Now, when you click on a texture, what happens is the image will open up to fit on screen. There's our texture being added as a new layer, complete with a layer mask under the overlay blend mode. Now, of course, yes, you can select the blend mode here, but if you can change the blend mode here as well. You might want to try, say, soft lights for an example. And you can see the way that not only are we adding subtle texture to a picture, but it's also those tonal ranges which are also being adjusted. And I just love the way this works. Right, coming back down, if you click on Alice again, the layer disappears. Now this will enable you to come through and to say, yeah, no, like it, don't like it. Let's go on to this one. And as you just switch them on and off, you're removing those layers as well. So it's a great way of working. Let's try this one. And you might like to try a couple of texture together. So let's try this one as well. Of course, you can add as many different textures as you like. I just love what it does to both the tones, the lighting and the subtle way that it adds texture to a picture. Right. Talking of adding multiple layers, if you come down to brainstorm, how many textures do you want to use? Now, I've selected two. I tend to use two, maximum of three. Randomize the blend mode. I've got a little tick in the box there. So in other words, it's going to use the popular blend modes of uh, both multiply and overlay. Click on the button to create random combinations. Off it goes. And some of them can be a little bit hit or miss. This one isn't too bad. It's using one of my favorites. I've just noticed the edge in here. I'll come back to that one in just a moment. Both are in the overlay blend mode. You might even want to try one in soft lights, but no, that's not going to work. So let's try some others. And if we just go, yeah, that looks pretty good like that. And just allow it to work its way through. It can be a little bit hit or miss. Sometimes it's bang and it really does work a treat. But so far, we're not getting a lot of luck with this. So let's take a look. If I just scroll down. There's one of the ones, Chatsworth. That's a pretty good one. And you get to know these various textures. Let's take a look at this one here. Yes, uh, let's come back up. My favorite ones tend to be here, Hampton. So let's try Hampton. This is one we saw earlier, which is the Fly Edge 4. And if we click on this, recognize those edges. And yeah, that could look pretty good. I quite like that. Perhaps just a little bit on the bright side. Let's try switch this one off. Let's try fly edge three. And as we click on this and look at the way this really changes the mood of the image. And when you look at the picture, yeah, I think this could work well. We're on the overlay blend mode. 
for this fly edge three. Let's try soft light, see how that works. That looks pretty good as well. Let's go back to overlay. We can reduce down the opacity, perhaps taking it to this area here. And I just like the way that works with the image here, switching this off and on. And you can see the way these two textures are working together. Now, of course, we've got a layer mask, so we can bring back cat light into various parts of the picture. I'm going to pick up the gradient tool. Make sure you've got the default colors, any other colors. Press D on the keyboard to restore that. We're going to click in the little window here because with the gradient editor, you need to make sure you have got the foreground to transparent. So that's this one here. So that's foreground through to transparent. Click OK to that. I've got the radial gradient tool. Opacity, I'm down to 50%. So press 5 on the keyboard and that'll drop you down to 50%. That will allow you to come in and just subtly paint in the lighting. Let's come to the flower, the vase there, over the flowers, onto that vase. Perhaps just this little display here. Talking of displays, let's go into that display window. I'm going to come over to the side, quite like this uh, metal column coming down here. Just adds to the grunginess of the picture, doesn't it? And the character side here. The texture has also added some rather nice stains to his t-shirt, but of course we can remove these stains should you want to by just doing this. It also highlights him a little bit more. And I think that adds to the mystery of the picture, which along with those colors, the tones, the lighting, yeah, I think that works a treat. So let's just switch these off. That's what we started off with. There it is. Don't forget, you can always come back into this. You can change the blend mode still. Let's try again, soft lights. Just taking that back up into this area here. Yeah, it's always a tough decision, isn't it? I think I'm going to go with this one now I've seen it. Something else I'd like to do is just group these layers together. So with the top layer that's highlighted, I'm going to press Command or Control, clicking on the bottom layer, both are highlighted, click on the little folder, or try the shortcut Command G or Control G, that's Command G or Control G, that groups them together. I'm just going to finish off with an adjustment layer of levels and just come to the center slider, just perhaps brighten it up very slightly like this. If we just take a look, there's the before, there's the after, coming over to layers. So there it is. I think it's just a great way of adding some subtle texture to a picture. You can change the tonal range of the image. You can enhance the lighting in the picture as well. And as you can see from this, the mood I think really does suit the image. So go on, give it a try. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Give it the thumbs up if you have. Don't forget to subscribe as there's plenty more videos to come. But until the next time, it is happy imaging and take care.